Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to be good in bed. And this is something that a lot of people worry about and there is a lot of advice out there about how one can be good in bed. And that tends to be the way that these questions and advice are phrased. Like, how can I be good in bed? And it's definitely a question that I get asked a lot as well. And so naturally in this video, we're gonna be exploring and dissecting and taking a look at some of the mainstream advice that is out there. And of course, asking, what does it even mean to be good in bed? And also spoiler alert, there is no technique that you can learn that will make you good in bed for every person in every context. So I ask my patrons and I asked you guys on Instagram, what is some mainstream sex advice that you have received or heard that is about how to be good in bed? And we're going to take a deep dive look into these and then hopefully offer some alternative, better, more nuanced, useful advice or, you know, things to think about. And thank you so much to Lello for sponsoring this video. More about them and some sweet, sweet discounts and deals on some sex toys later. But first, let's just dive straight in to some of this bad how to be good in bed advice. <laughs> so our first category of advice is the oversimplifying. Things people said were just relax and enjoy it or just be confident, you're sexier when you're confident. And it's these like just sentences, like just do this or just do that. And then all of your sexy problems will be solved that I think people find really frustrating because your follow-up question is like, how do I do those things? And on the confidence thing, actually vulnerability is something that can lead to really great intimacy and sexy times. So if you're not feeling super confident about some things, that can be something that you bring up with your partner. Also, when you are not relaxed and you are tense and somebody tells you, just relax, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Of course, there are lots of really useful ways that do help you relax, but sometimes being told to relax doesn't help at all. I recently went to see a sexological body worker because of my really tense pelvic floor. And one of the things that she said is that she avoids using words like, oh, just relax your pelvic floor, but instead uses words like loosen or lower or drop down because the word relax is so emotionally loaded for us. And I really love that approach. So it's not just about relaxing, while that could be good. Maybe it's about taking action or saying something out loud so that thing that's stressing you out isn't taking up real estate in your mind anymore. Maybe it's about breathing exercises. Maybe it's about visualizing your body loosening. Maybe it's about having a really nice massage beforehand. Like there are all of these things that can help you loosen and maybe relax. <laughs> Next up is tricky communication. Somebody said that the advice, talk dirty to your partner, is again, similar to the oversimplifying. It's like, okay, great, but how? Thank you very much. When it comes to talking dirty as well, everybody is different in terms of what they like, what words that really turn them on, what words really turn them off. So just as a starting point, it's about figuring out with your partner, like, hey, what do you want me to call your genitals? Like. What do you want me to call you? Having that conversation about what language is appropriate and sexy is just the bare minimum, the starting point for talking dirty. And then you just take all of those nouns that you've just got that you can play with and add some verbs. This has just turned into an English lesson, essentially. You have your subject, your verb, and your object. There you go. Talking dirty, 101. Somebody also said that bad advice that they received was, if I want something sexual, to make subtle hints instead of asking clearly. We are never taught to really just be direct, like especially if you're a woman or person with a vulva, like it is a no, no, no for you to like really ask for what you want, like know what you want. The dropping subtle hints can be fun if you already have like an established understanding with your partner about what those hints are and that they will be like clued into them and actually recognize them. But if it's like early days dating, like it's somebody new and you're like trying to drop hints about what you want, like good luck, good luck. Like you might get really lucky and they figure it out, but ultimately like that is not a tried and tested method to get what you want in bed. This next one is a big one and it is the gender 
stereotypes. And this is something I just always see everywhere when it comes to like mainstream sex advice, like how to be good in bed. And some of the things that people said were like, guys love it when you give them head and like women love to be spanked and just making these huge generalizations about what men want, about what women want. And often it being like really stereotypical about certain genders and making a lot of assumptions. For one, everybody's sexuality is unique when it comes to the things that they like, the things that they want, and also like specifically in different contexts at different times and things like that. And these big generalizations about what different genders like in bed can actually be really, really harmful. So for instance, some people said, he is always ready for sex and always wants it all of the time and men can't control themselves, biggest lie ever. And yeah, these myths about male sexuality, and they absolutely are myths, can be really dangerous. They can make men who aren't really interested in sex or asexual feel like there's something wrong with them. And it's also often used to excuse really harmful behavior. Like, oh, he couldn't control himself. Absolute bullshit. Another one was that normal women actually don't make noise during sex. It gave me a weird complex. Yes, I feel like this is like a really common thing, but oh my goodness. Everyone makes all sorts of weird and wonderful and wild noises during sex or none at all. Like embrace it, embrace it. Don't act like you want it too much as this might seem desperate and unladylike. That kind of ties into the dropping hints as well. Like you're not allowed to be direct. <laughs> so this came from Redbook, which is a magazine. Never let your husband see you get dressed or undressed because it was unflattering. Oh my God, I'm so curious, it's like what year? That piece of advice was printed. Wow. It all has to be an illusion. Like they can't see behind the curtain. They can't see the process. It has to be just like perfect. Next up, mainstream sex advice tends to focus a lot on male pleasure. Do I need to explain why this is bad? <laughs> A friend once said, make your vagina feel like his hand because that's what he's used to. How about let your vagina feel like a vagina? As a girl to drink from a bottle rather than a can or glass because it suggests a blowjob and boys like it. It's just so male gazy that like everything that we do has to be for the benefit of a man observing it or experiencing it and nothing about like what you want to do yourself. I remember reading these kind of magazines when I was like 17 years old and it was just like 50 blowjob tips to drive him wild. And I just, I ate it up. I was like, yes, tell me, I must know. <laughs> ah. So next up is technique specific advice. Now, I do believe that there is a time and a place for talking about technique, but it has to be like a really specific context. It can't be general advice that is given to like lots of people that is going to be read or seen by a lot of people or that is going to be applied to a lot of people, but you're actually giving really specific advice. That to me doesn't work. It's that bit in sex education where somebody gives Otis the advice about how to go down on Ola and it's something about like, the clock work thing and doing the clock and he tries to do the clock with his tongue and she's just like, what the fuck is happening? But these are some of the kind of similar and funny technique specific advice that you guys sent in. Someone said to give good cunnilingus, make circles around the clit and then flick it strongly with your tongue. I'm just trying to imagine that. So like, ah, and then uh, no, maybe that would really work for someone. But again, you can't do this as like general advice. Draw the ABCs when going down on a woman. Okay, are we doing capitals or lowercase? What do we reckon? So I feel like lowercase will be better, like more cursive, like it will flow better. So let's give it a go, right? A, Z, C, C, E, F, G. No, right, we're, go we're just going up to G. I don't think that would work for me personally. Wrap a pearl necklace around your partner's penis. This was on every Spice It Up Cosmo list. What is this meant to do? Like just make the whole thing feel more elegant? I don't understand. Is it meant to be like cold? Cause I could understand like temperature play. To perform a blowjob as if you were eating an ice cream cone. How do I eat ice cream cone? I'm like, do I have an ice cream here? I do not have an ice cream here. I sometimes do a bit of a a bit of that. I'm doing a uh, 99 flake or oh, oh, twister. That's a different story because I like to get my tongue like right in the crease on a twister. But also on a 99, I do kind of like to get the top. So I do a bit of a 
Oh my God, I love it. Do you know what? I'm gonna use that advice next time. It's gonna be great. Grab a penis and move it around side to side, back and forth like a joystick. Ouch. Maybe ask them first before attempting that. The pepper grinder technique from Cosmo, basically giving a willy friction burn. <laughs> no. I mean, unless that's like a kink, but maybe check first. If you're, if you're lubed, could be good. Unlubed, different story. Everything unlubed is a different story. <laughs> Next up, I wanna talk about what I'm calling the solo sex paradox when it comes to advice. So first up, there is just tons of mainstream advice out there that is just like, solo sex is bad. Especially if you are in a relationship. There is this perpetual myth that when you're in a relationship that you shouldn't want to masturbate or you shouldn't like even think about masturbating. Like, no, 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 that is bad for the relationship. Like this person said, solo masturbation ruins your sex life with your partner. False. <laughs> That is false. But then we've also seen with the rise of sex positivity, a lot of other advice around solo sex, like, hey, masturbation can help you actually have better sex with your partner. And this kind of comes into the oversimplifying again, and I've probably fallen into this trap in all of the different ways that I've talked about solo sex here on this channel. But first off, like, how? How do you get from having good solo sex to having good partnered sex? Like what are actually like the little steps that have to be taken to bridge that gap? And then also just acknowledging that solo sex doesn't have to just be a means to an end of having good partnered sex. It can just be an end in itself. Like you can just be having good solo sex and that is great. So speaking of solo sex, one of these little mini steps on our way could be thinking about using sex toys. And so thank you so much to Lello for sponsoring this video. Lello are just one of my favorite sex toy companies. They make just the most beautiful toys. They look absolutely gorgeous. They're really non-intimidating, which can be really good, especially if you're somebody who is new to sex toys and can really help you discover the whole wonderful world of sex toys and self pleasure. Lello are all about empowering you to get to know your own self-pleasure and your body and just really exploring your own sexual fantasies. So one of the most common complaints about sex toys is that when you're like really getting going, you're like, this is it, it's happening, and you're like pressing that toy like closer and harder against your body, that the intensity drops off. And that is not what you want in that moment. And it loses its power and intensity. And so Lello came up with a solution for just that problem. <laughs> yes! This is the Lello Sila Cruise. I have worked with Lello before. I have talked about this product before. It is by far one of my favorite sex toys and even postpartum, it's still just like sitting there by my bed in my like favorites drawer. I am obsessed. I love this toy. The cruise control technology in this toy reserves 20% of its power. So this means that when you press it hard against your body, instead of losing any intensity, the toy automatically releases that 20%. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to press any buttons, you just have to enjoy yourself, press it harder, and it will not lose any intensity. It is of course made out of gorgeous, smooth and soft body safe silicone, it is waterproof, and it is a clitoral stimulation that uses that sonic wave technology. One of my favorite things is that it has has this really wide mouth and so it kind of affects the whole vulva genital area and not just the clitoris and I personally love that obviously not everyone is the same we're all different and so what works for me might not work for you but there are lots of ways to use this toy and explore your body with it I'm still learning new things about how I can play with this toy now even though I've had it for like a couple of years now I think it's safe to say I've had some of the most intense orgasms of my life with this toy and orgasms are really great for your physical and mental health. For me at the moment, when I do get a chance to have some solo sex, it is just a really great time for me to chill out and unwind and be really mindful, take things slow and really pay attention to every sensation. And oh boy, does this toy deliver on those sensations. I've talked about this toy so much, I genuinely love it. So it is Black Friday coming up and Lello have some huge discounts across all of their products. So if the Sealer Cruise isn't for you, that is absolutely fine. I'm sure you will be able to find something that will rock your world. Link is in the description, lello.com, huge discounts, Black Friday, sex toys, go, 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 enjoy, you're welcome. And thank you Lello for sponsoring this video. Back to how to be good in bed. 
according to mainstream sex advice. Next up, a common feature is non-inclusive advice. A lot of this advice ignores the absolutely huge spectrum of gender and sexuality and makes tons of assumptions about what people are into, who they're into, what they like based on their genitals. For example, all of the how to drive her wild advice is very much about pleasing people with vulvas and is usually very much aimed at men or people with penises. Here's some of the advice that you guys sent in. It's not considered sex unless it's piv, penis and vagina. What the fuck? What the fuck indeed? So much mainstream sex advice really focuses on foreplay and doesn't really consider it real sex because it's what's like leading up to penetrative penis and vagina sex. When I talk about different kinds of sex now, I actually try to even avoid the word foreplay because it is loaded with that assumption that it comes before like the main course. This person has said, the whole lesbians can only scissor thing was pretty weird growing up as a closeted lesbian. Yeah, like if all of the advice out there either doesn't include you or when it does just gets it so wrong, how is that gonna help you figuring out like your sex and sexuality and like all of these sexual experiences that you may have that will potentially confuse the hell out of you. So some bad advice can be really funny and we can laugh at it, but some other bad advice can be really harmful. And we've talked a little bit about some of those, but this next category is body shaming. So this is all of that advice that is telling you how to look and also like how to smell. A sex position guide recommended bigger women to stay away from being on top. That should not be a general rule. And there's so much fat phobia in our society and especially like when it intersects with like the politics of desirability, it gets so icky. But fat people can absolutely be on top. Talk to your partner about anything, like in any situation, talk to your partner. Is that a position you wanna get in? Like what are some things that you have to consider? Like go for it. Every inch of your body needs to be shaved in order to be desirable. Whoop whoop, politics of body hair. That's a whole other thing as well. Again, you do you. Do what you want with your body hair. Douche if you want to smell nice for your partner. Again, it's like it being for somebody else as well and not about being for yourself. Ugh, big icks, big icks. This next one again is in the harmful category and very much connected to the whole like how to smell vibe and that is bad health advice. There is advice out there about how to be good in bed that would not be recommended by your doctor. One of my patrons said a thing that they heard was to put honey in your vagina to make it taste sweet when they go down on you. I mean, what? I honestly don't know what would happen if you put honey in your vagina, like ask a medical doctor, but my instincts are telling me no. <laughs> Dusting your privates with powdered sugar. Can you say yeast infection? <laughs> like icing sugar? No. To put aloe vera inside the vagina to smell good down there. Okay. Putting toothpaste on a vulva to feel different sensations. Love that chemical burn. Like this advice is out there. This next group makes me so angry because this advice is so pervasive in mainstream society. And that is the whole pain is normal advice. This starts with virginity, that if you're somebody with a vulva, sex is meant to hurt, that the first time is just going to hurt and that is something that you have to accept. I'm sorry. And there's also lots of advice out there about pushing through pain and having sex even when you don't want to or aren't enjoying it. Here's some of that glorious, terrible, advice. If it's taking too long and you're over it, fake the orgasm to move things along. Yeah, instead of communicating that you're over it. If it hurts, you just have to do it more often. Oh no. Lie back and think of England. A classic. A classic. It was all like, you gotta do it to keep your man happy no matter what it was. This is a really big one and especially one that I've seen a lot more since having my baby and in some of the like mum forums in apps and online, there is a lot of worry that mums whose partners are men, that even if they are not ready to be sexual again postpartum, that it is something that they have to do to like keep their man interested in them, keep their partner like there. And I hate it. I hate that that is a mentality that we are in collectively. Wine will help vaginismus issues. I have a vague memory of somebody, maybe somebody I interviewed on the podcast or maybe a friend that I've spoken to saying that that was something that their doctor actually like said to them, like, oh, just have some wine before having sex. That is so bad. 
that is so bad. Mm, no, like numbing the pain is not going to help with the actual problem. And if you are numbing yourself, then that could cause more issues because there could be scratches or tears or damage done that you're not properly feeling. No, the blue balls bullshit. Have sex with him, otherwise he'll get blue balls. I hate the blue balls narrative. It is manipulative. No. The guy should bite your ear during penetration to distract you from the pain of intercourse. I'm sorry, no. If you need to be distracted from the pain of intercourse, no. No. Oh. That pain in the vagina during penetration means I'm close to orgasm. Who said that? There can potentially be that uncomfortable feeling like you need to pee, but it shouldn't be pain. First time sex can hurt for days after. So I missed a UTI kidney infection, almost died. I'm sorry, what? Is that not evidence enough that the whole sex is going to hurt and we should just accept it? advice just being absolutely terrible and we need to eradicate it from society. Practice gagging yourself while brushing your teeth to improve your deep throating skills. Do you know, some of us are just naturally gifted at deep throating and some of us aren't and that should be something that we accept maybe. Maybe there are ways to train yourself, that is not something that I'm an expert in, but maybe you don't gag yourself on a toothbrush. Okay, actually maybe this category makes me the most angry and that is lack of consent. This is the whole, people find it so hot when you take the lead and so just pick her up and throw her down and drive her wild. Maybe discuss that beforehand. If that is something that you want to do, it can still very much be an in the moment spontaneous thing if you have discussed prior, hey, whilst we're in the throes of passion, this is something that I would like you to do. Then whilst in the throes of passion, you can then choose to do that if you so wish. But maybe not if it hasn't been discussed beforehand because that, that could be quite intense in a bad way. Wake your man up by giving him a blowjob whilst he's sleeping. Same thing as before, do not wake somebody up by touching their genitals with your mouth or hands or like doing anything sexual with them without their prior consent. And like some people might just be like, blanket, no, never, not at all. I feel like in some relationships, in some contexts, it might be something that people are into, but it has to be so clearly discussed beforehand because wow. Also, it could change in the moment. Like if you've had a really bad sleep and this, so you're being woken up like that, even if you've agreed to it prior, you could be like, no, Tapping out, tapping out. Surprise him by putting a finger up his anus. Totally not sexual assault to surprise someone with that. Exactly. Nothing wrong with a finger up the anus with consent. A lot of sex advice also has a complete lack of awareness around safer sex practices. I'm not sure if these make me want to laugh or cry, but we have. Use cling film if you don't have a condom handy. Advice given by my mum's friend. What? No, don't do that, please. If the guy dips his balls in hot water before having sex, the sperm will die. She won't get pregnant. Okay, I understand the logic that has happened to reach this conclusion, which is like the reason why the balls are on the outside of the body is to keep the sperm cool. But like, you cannot guarantee it. Like, like I don't know at what temperature sperm dies. Even if dipping your balls in hot water killed off some sperm, there is hundreds of millions of the stuff. There will be some survivors and you only need one. Also, that might really hurt your balls, unless it's a kink, you know, but it could still damage them, but you might enjoy it, that's fine. The only good way to avoid getting HIV is to find one partner and never have sex with anyone else. This is giving me abstinence only vibes. Yes, that is a way to avoid getting an STI, but is it realistic? And also, does it actually guarantee that you won't get an STI because you only have control over your own sexual behavior, not other people's? So it doesn't really guarantee that. So I wanted to end on a very silly high and this last category is called, this is made up, right? I mean, isn't all sex advice made up? But these ones feel like they've been particularly made up and have never actually been done before. We'll see. Maybe some of you will go forth and try these things now. So one that one of my patrons sent in was when on top to spell out the word coconut with your hips. I've not heard this one before. We're gonna give it a go and see if I think it would work. So we're gonna go lowercase. So C, oh no, O, C, O, can I spell? N, U, oh, I don't like that. 
tea. I don't think coconut is a good one. I think it needs to be something that, no. <laughs> Does it, would anything work? Tell me, is there a word that would work? But I don't personally think coconut would work. Miming Mars bar to learn how to kiss. Does it look like I'm potentially making out with someone? Turn your partner on by wrapping your hair around their penis. What? I don't have long enough hair, unfortunately. Tie up your hair with your knickers post-sex to look chill and laid back in front of your partner. This is one of those like, you're trying so hard to seem chill things that it comes across as completely unhinged. I like it. Never forgotten the put pepper under his nose so sneeze makes climax more intense. I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever sneezed whilst having an orgasm? Was it good? Let me know. Give a minty blowjob. I guess my extra minty gum was too strong and he started screaming. <gasps> no. So tons of you said that in an old Cosmo article, it said to put a donut around a dick and eat it off. This is wild to me that loads of you are reading this exact magazine at the same time and it has just like lodged in your brains. I don't personally remember this one, but loads of you do. And so many of you mentioned this that we had to try it, obviously. I have a dildo and I have a donut. Donut mind if I do. The first thing I'm noticing here is that the hole in this donut is too small. And you know, there are dicks girthier than this, so I'm not entirely sure how this would work on a real penis. First off, let's lay down some kitchen roll on my lap. Safety first, kids. Use protection. I don't know what the strat is. I think, do I, should I just go in? Should I just try and shove it in? Oh no, I'm gonna break it. Oh dear. Right, please stay in one piece so I can eat you. <gasps> okay, okay. It has emerged. Mm, delicious. How would the, I'm trying to think how this would work with an actual dick, but I'm just gonna eat a donut now, so. Oh my God, it's still, it's still staying on. Impressive. Mm. Oh my God, I didn't realize how hungry I was. Is this sexy or is this just, me eating a donut off a dildo. How would I make this sexy? Oh, it's breaking. It's breaking, no! Come on. I think I would get distracted from the sex with the snack. Oh dear. Okay, well, we gave it a go. All in all, I wouldn't say that I would recommend it off a penis for sexy times, but um, 10 out of 10 for the donut. I love a good donut. So there we have it. What a climax. I feel like a lot of this how to be good in bed advice really focuses on sex as a performance and being about like how you're perceived by others and feeling like you have something to prove rather than it being about mutual pleasure and communication and vulnerability and about like figuring out the specifics of sex that will work for you rather than it being about like how do I make this person see that I am good at sex. Because it's not about if like you're good at sex, like no one is good at sex just as a blanket term for every person. In reality, the things that might make you good at sex are that you can adapt and that you can communicate and that you are a compassionate and caring and enthusiastic learner. But even if you are all of those things, there will still be some people who you just don't match with. So I just don't believe that there is really anybody who is good or bad in bed. You can certainly have some like good or bad sexual experiences, but that's more about the way that the people in that scenario are coming together rather than one person being good or one person being bad. Sex isn't something that you can win or lose. And I feel like a lot of this advice frames it in that way and thinks of sex in that way. It's about exploring and discovering and learning and enjoying and that just being a process and a journey and it being something that you are curious about and not necessarily about like the end goal. There is no right or wrong way to have sex. Everybody is different and as long as everybody is on board and enjoying it, then you're all good. And no judgment here if you do want to include donuts in your sexual scenarios. Go at it. Donut mind if I do. Ha 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 ha. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comments. One, if you also read that Cosmo article about the donut. I'm curious like how many 
people know about this. And also if there's any other bad sex advice that you have received or heard about, about how to be good in bed. And thank you so much to Lello again for sponsoring this video. Check out all of their Black Friday discounts in the link in the description. I hope that you're doing well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.